So many students worry about how to introduce themselves to the examiner and what's actually going to happen on test day when you're doing your IELTS speaking test. And this can actually cause many students to get a lower score than they deserve. So what I'm going to do in this video is take you from leaving your home all the way to part one of the speaking test. Exactly what is going to happen, how to introduce yourself, what's going to happen at the test center, and a few vital pieces of information that will help you perform to the best of your ability. So this is the examiner on test day, and this is your home. I am much better at teaching IELTS than I am at drawing. I'm terrible at drawing, so forgive the drawings. So really your preparation starts about 48 hours before your test. So about 48 hours before your test, the first thing is do not cram. What does cram mean? mean? It means do not try and study as much as possible in the days leading up to your speaking test. You are not going to improve your speaking ability whatsoever in the days leading up to your speaking test. If you cram and you're sitting up all night studying and trying to frantically find out how to improve your speaking score, it will actually lower your speaking score because you will get desperate and you will go onto YouTube and be looking for tips and tricks and hacks and shortcuts. And most of the stuff about the speaking test online is totally false and will lower your score. So do not do this. What you can do instead is something that we call an English warm up. So just like an athlete would warm up before a big event, what you can do is you know, watch some English movies or English TV shows or listen to some podcasts in English or read an English book, something like that. Nothing too strenuous, nothing too difficult, but just to warm yourself up if you want to do something before your test day. Also, you might not consider this, but sleep and diet are really important. We've had students who really deserve a band eight or a band nine, and they've got a 6.5 because they didn't sleep very well the night before, or they didn't eat that morning, and they got to the test center, and they just couldn't do anything. Because if you don't sleep well, and you don't have anything in your stomach, you're not going to have the focus and the energy to actually perform at your best. So make sure that you're getting enough sleep in the days leading up to your test and you're just eating a healthy diet. So 24 hours before your test, so the day before your test, it's really important that you plan your journey. You wouldn't believe the number of students that show up late to their speaking test. And if you show up late, you're going to be very sweaty, you're going to be very stressed. And again, if you deserve a band seven and you show up late and you're very stressed, you're probably going to get a 6.5 or a six. That's not the fault of the examiner, that's your fault. It doesn't matter if there was bad traffic, that's your fault for not planning your journey or the bus was late or the train was late or whatever. It is your responsibility to get to the test center on time. So plan your journey. How are you going to get there? Are you going to use public transport? Are you going to use your own transport? Are you relying on someone else to bring you to the test center? Do they know how important it is that you get there on time? Make sure that you get there at least 30 minutes before your actual test starts. Because when you get there, it's going to be extremely busy. There's going to be a lot of people who don't know what they're doing, who are very stressed out. Often the staff, at the exam centers are not very good at their jobs and they're stressed out. So if you get there very early and get through the whole registration process relatively stress-free, then you can perform to the best of your ability. And make sure that you, you know, pack your ID and water and if you need food, if you need you know, medication, whatever, I don't know, whatever you need in order to perform to the best of your ability pack that into a bag the day before. So it's just one less thing to worry about. Okay, so on the day of the test, you're gonna to get to the test center at least 30 minutes before you need to register. And you're gonna go in and the staff at the test center 
will register you. They'll also allow you to, you know, if you have a bag, if you have any belongings, they will give you a locker or a key or somewhere to keep your belongings, keep your, your, your bag safe. So don't worry about bringing all this stuff. You don't have to bring it into the exam room. You'll then be asked to go to some kind of a waiting room where you will wait outside the test room and wait for the examiner to call you. So make sure you use the toilet if you need to use the toilet. Um, again, it's very, it sounds very funny, but this has led to people failing their test where they are very nervous, they don't know where the toilet is, they don't go to the toilet, and then they're focused on not peeing themselves rather than answering the questions. It sounds ridiculous, but it does happen. And you need to do something while you're waiting outside this room to relax. That could be breathing, that could be some kind of meditation, whatever works for you. But if you sit outside the exam room and just think about how terrible your speaking is and you're going to fail and you're just thinking of very, very negative thoughts, that is going to influence your performance. So you need something to take your mind off those negative thoughts. And what I would do is what we advise our students to do is tell yourself how much preparation you've done. Think about how good you are at speaking the English language. You deserve to get the score that you need because you've put in the work, right? And also accept that nerves, so being nervous, being anxious, this is normal. This is your body preparing you physiologically for a stressful situation. So it's going to dump adrenaline into your system and that is why you feel nervous. So just observe that as something that is good because it's going to help you focus. So be aware that that is happening to you. It will happen to you, but use it in a positive way. And then the examiner is going to come out of this door and they're going to invite you in to the test room. Now, I haven't put a smiley face here for a reason. Many students think that if the examiner is not friendly or the examiner is not smiling, that it means that the examiner is going to give them a low score or the examiner doesn't like them or the examiner is in a bad mood and they're going to automatically give you a lower score. The examiner is doing their job. Some of them are friendly, some of them are not so friendly. That has no influence over your performance and over your score. What influences your score is your performance, not the mood or whether the examiner has a big smile on their face or not. So how do you greet the examiner? That's the title of this video and many of the videos that you'll find on YouTube and blogs and stuff like that will tell you to greet the examiner in a very specific way. And if you greet the examiner in a certain way, you will improve your score. That is total BS. It does not matter. How you greet them. It simply does not matter. They are not even thinking about your score right now. The test only begins after they ask the first question in part one. Any teacher or YouTuber or so-called expert that is teaching you that if you greet the examiner in a certain way, you'll get a higher score, they have never been an examiner and they don't know what they're doing because anyone who has been an examiner knows that you do not score the student until you ask the first question in part one. But one thing that you should do is speak to them like they are human. The examiner is not special. They are not more intelligent than you are. They are not more important than you are. If they were very intelligent and very important, they wouldn't be an IELTS examiner in a foreign country listening to you on a Saturday morning. They are a human being. This is not going to influence your score, speaking to them like a human being, but it's going to help you relax. And if you're relaxed and just speaking to them like you would a normal human, 
then your pronunciation, your fluency, your grammar, your vocabulary is all going to naturally be better because our brains operate more fluidly, more effectively when we're not stressed, when we're not nervous. If you think that the examiner is this really important person and you need to speak to them like they are, you know, the president of the country that you're currently in, that is nonsense. And you're going to speak to them in a very robotic, unnatural, academic, formal way. IELTS are not judging your ability to speak in that way. They're judging your ability to speak just normally to normal people. So speak to them like they're a human being. That's going to help you relax and everything will be much better if you do that. So they'll ask you to sit down and you'll sit down opposite them and they will be recording what you are saying already. Even though they're recording what you're saying already, they don't use this to judge your score. Your score doesn't begin until they ask you the first question in part one. But don't be put off by this. Also, they might make some notes. Don't worry about what notes they make. So it's a very common thing that the examiner will write numbers. So it might be a number like the, the timing or something like that. And you will look at it and think, oh my God, they wrote down five. I'm at a band five. Or they might write down nine and you think that you've got a band nine. These have nothing to do with your score. So ignore the notes that they're making. They'll then ask you if they can like, double check their ID, your ID, hand it to them. Don't have to worry about this. And then they'll ask you two questions. What's your name? Just tell them your name. There is no special way of telling them, tell them your name. That's, that's not that complicated. And then they'll say, what can I call you? And you just say, you can call me whatever, whatever your name is, whatever you want to be called. Again, there's no special way of saying this. Just tell them you're not being judged yet. Then part one will begin and they will ask you about some common topics. So home, hometown, work or study. A very common mistake that many students make is because they're anticipating these topics, they will memorize answers for these topics. Do not do this. If you do this, what you will do is you will indicate to the examiner that you don't know how to speak English because memorization and communication are two very, very different things. And you're basically giving the examiner the first impression that you are trying to cheat the test. And what will happen is you will give a very long memorized answer for one of these common topics with lots of great vocabulary and lots of great grammar and you're very fluent. Then they'll ask you about some unusual topics. Why do you think they do that? Why do you think they'll say, do you like hats? Or when was the last time you bought a birthday cake? They will ask you about these more unusual topics because they know that you're not expecting these. You don't have memorized answers for these. And they will judge you on your answer for the more unusual topics. In other words, the answer that you did not memorize. So just, again, speak to them like they're a human. If a human asks you, do you work or do you study or tell me about your hometown, you would just answer naturally. And it's also important to realize that the first few questions in part one are just a warm up. They're a warm up for you because just like again, like an athlete, you need to relax into the test. The examiner is considering what you're saying, but they're not judging you too harshly at the beginning of part one because they know they're just warming up. This also gives the examiner a chance to warm up and get used to your accent, your style of speaking, your pronunciation and focus in on what's actually happening. So that's it. Hope that you enjoyed this video.